Hey everybody, Jay Super Awesome here. I'd like to welcome you all to week number 30 of the Horror Man Slashback Saturday Challenge. This week's slasher movie theme is Halfway to Holiday Slashers, and I will be giving my review for Don't Open Till Christmas. Okay, so getting into the plot for this one, Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, they were all dead. The gift of terror that just won't wait. Don't open till Christmas is a thrilling and bizarre murder mystery where nothing is sacred, even Santa Claus. A killer is on the loose in London, and his sights are set on one target, Santa Claus. Dozens of them. Jolly old St. Nick is stabbed, beaten, and electrocuted in department stores, at parties, even on crowded corner streets. What sort of twisted mind is behind these barbacious acts of violence? Scotland Yard is on the trail, but every clue points them in a different direction. The culprit is right under their nose, but will they come to this conclusion in time? Okay, so getting into my thoughts for this one. With this week's Slashback Challenge theme of Halfway to Holiday Slashers, we were simply challenged to watch and review a slasher film that was set on or around Christmas. So I have decided to watch and review Don't Open Till Christmas because it's an 80s classic slasher that I had never seen before. Until recently, I had never even owned a copy of Don't Open Till Christmas and stumbled across this copy by complete and random chance. And I picked this copy up for less than $5. And I'm really glad that I did because I had an absolute blast watching this movie. And there's really no way that I could say that this is a good movie because overall it's pretty bad. There's issues with the editing. Some of the scenes don't really flow together all that well. Some of the scenes were shot and filmed really dark looking. So a lot of times it's hard to see everything that's going on. And then we have characters that appear in this movie for absolutely no reason. You would think that they would add to the movie's overall body count or be important to the story in some way, but that's just not the case. They are here and then they are gone, and ultimately it just feels like scenes that were tacked on to add to the movie's overall runtime. And a lot of this was due to the troubled production the movie had. It went through multiple directors before the movie was finally complete. And considering all of this, I still feel like the movie flowed really well. I stayed interested and engaged in this giallo-style murder mystery slasher. And I say giallo-style because that's what I relate with a murder mystery-style story that has an investigation. And everyone may not agree, but that is just how I choose to keep it simple. In this movie, we have a killer who is going around killing people who are dressed up as Santa Claus and the police department is trying to solve this crime. There is a lot of misdirection that is set up for the identity of the killer. I feel like a lot of this is due to rewrites and so many different people trying to get this movie complete. I actually really do like the reveal of who the killer is. I just feel like they lost focus on the killer actually killing people dressed up as Santa Claus. Because later on, he actually kidnaps a peep show dancer who he intends to kill later on for his ultimate holiday sacrifice. Luckily for us, at the end of the movie, we do get a flashback sequence where we see the killer at a very young age, and we do get an idea of why he's doing what he's doing. Overall, I thought Don't Open Till Christmas was a fun and entertaining low-budget slasher film from the 80s, it definitely has its own fair share of issues, such as continuity issues with the storyline, and the way the movie was shot and filmed wasn't necessarily all that great, but I still had a fun time watching it. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the cast of characters we have and don't open till Christmas. So we have a lot of characters in this movie. We have the police department that's trying to find out who the killer is and put a stop to all the killings. We have Kate, whose father was murdered for being dressed up as Santa Claus at the beginning of the movie, and she's trying to do everything she can to help the police department find out who the killer is. And then we have Cliff, Kate's inconsiderate asshole boyfriend. And I say this because considering everything Kate is going through with her father's death, it doesn't seem to faze Cliff whatsoever. There is a scene in the movie where Cliff and Kate go to visit one of Cliff's friends, who just so happens to be a photographer who photographs nude women. 
and he is in a little bit of a bind because he was supposed to photograph two nude women and only one of them showed up. So in an attempt to be a good friend, Cliff offers up his own girlfriend, Kate, to take her place to take nude photos with the other girl. So not only is Kate to take nude photos, she has to start off the shoot by wearing a Santa suit. Of course, this all infuriates Kate and she storms away. Cliff seems to be unfazed by this and he decides to hang out. Of course, after all, there is a nude chick there. Smooth move, Cliff. And of course, we have a lot of side characters that show up, people who are dressed as Santa Claus that adds to the movie's overall body count and to the movie's overall entertainment value. I didn't really necessarily think the acting was all that great in this movie, but I didn't mind it either. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the most important part of a slasher movie, that is the killer and the kills. So, I really do like the look of the killer in this movie. It's pretty simplistic. The killer is wearing a clear-looking mask with a hooded jacket. It's pretty simple, but it's still pretty effective. And I really do like the concept of this killer, the fact that he is killing off people who are dressed up as Santa Claus. I just thought that was really cool. And I do like the backstory he was given towards the end of the movie. It just adds to the overall character. And as far as the kills go in this movie, it has a pretty high body count and we have a wide variety of kills. So when you add that on top of a killer who is killing people dressed as Santa Claus, that's about all I needed to be entertained by this low budget slasher film. I can overlook things like issues with the storyline and even bad acting. I thought this movie did a pretty good job of delivering some fun and entertaining kills. And something else that I really enjoyed about the kills in this movie is they all seem to happen in some pretty unique locations, so I really enjoyed that. And overall, I really enjoyed watching Don't Open Till Christmas. It's probably not going to be for everybody, and it's most definitely not one of my favorite holiday slasher movies, but I did like it enough that I will probably put it into my Christmas horror rotation. So I'm going to give Don't Open Till Christmas a 6 out of 10. Please like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know if you have seen Don't Open Till Christmas, or just let me know what you think about my review, and I would like to thank you all for watching.